Welcome back to another part of whatever it is I do here. If you couldn't figure out what this episode's about, the thumbnail and title also kind of give it away. The Arctic Cat quad used to sit right where the camera currently sits, and also the PW80's done, so we need to pick up a new project. It's a mower, and we are going to do a race build. Okay. So here's what we're working with. It is a 2003 Craftsman LT1000, and this has the 18 and a half horse Intec V-Twin that I think is 656 cc or 41 cubic inches, somewhere in there. This is a fairly common engine to build off of for actual race mowers. There's the Vanguard version, which is the commercial grade, which is more overbuilt and it's meant for more stress. And that one has more aftermarket support than this one does. This is like the residential version, but there's still like, if I wanted to, I can get built everything for this. Like they may, there are parts for this. The plan for this, just to sort of like limit myself from going crazy, I'm gonna do it in two steps. The first step is to build it using just parts on the mower, like spare parts I have, no fancy aftermarket stuff. So no billet engine stuff, no like live axle kits, stuff like that, just because I wanna build it just for fun, like you could in your backyard or whatever first. I don't know if there'll be a goal for a speed or something, but that'll be the first step. Then once I'm bored of that, then I, want, I plan to do a full FX class build, which is like the unlimited class for mowers there. It's like the fastest ones. I'm gonna build off of that criteria just so that I don't get way overboard with it. I don't actually plan to like race the thing. I just plan to build to that set of criteria. First thing we're gonna do is just do a once over, like throw away anything I don't want and then see if we can get the engine to run just to like get as stripped down as possible. Like I guess raw as possible. I went ahead and did this off camera just cause it's not interesting and I was excited to work on it. But I went ahead and removed all of the mowing deck components. And then everything else that I took off is mostly gonna be trash. It's got compression. The oil looks fine, the plugs look fine, the filter looks fine. So I'm really not sure what they're talking about while they're saying this thing was blown up. I already went ahead and put oil in it just because when I first got it, I realized there was no oil in it at all. The filter's on it and the filter's used. So I don't know why it had no oil in it, but I went ahead and put fresh oil in it with a whole bunch of marble mist oil in it just for that initial break in, in case there's a reason why there was no oil in it. I'm gonna pull one of these plugs real quick and just look at it and see where we're at. Plugs look really good. I don't know if these are the original, like the right ones or not. I've not messed with one of these engines before, but that spark plug number is really, uh, doesn't seem right. So let's pull it out and see if that one looks the same. Yeah, this is a different one. So we have one NGK and one Champion. They are physically the same plug, but they're still not the same. So I mean, they don't look horrible. They definitely look like they were replaced fairly recently, but whoever installed them, either, I don't know if they just used what they had lying around, or what? Because I mean, I feel like these are supposed to be RC12YC. This is XC12YC and this one's CS6. This one's probably interchangeable. I don't know why they're not the same brand. I don't know, just gonna clean them up, throw them back in and replace them down the line. Huh, that's nice and new. There's like nothing in here. Don't know if it was serviced recently or what. So yeah, I'm just gonna throw some gas in it. We'll see if it'll fire up. garage is like full of smoke now. I went in, rolled it outside and got it up the temperature, burn off a bunch of extra crud. I took the muffler off just to, you know, I had to hear what it sounded like. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. It's gonna be loud and it's definitely gonna peak the microphone. So uh, heads up. Shit. It's not gonna stay with the open exhaust. I'm gonna put the muffler back on for now. And then when I get a chance, I'm gonna build actual headers and stuff for it. Cause we need back pressure. We can't run it like this for long. I want to have a main power kill switch, like just a regular toggle for main power, push button start, and then a tether kill switch. 
that way, like if I fall off this thing, it'll shove it off and won't just take off somewhere. <laughs> Once that's done, this thing will be ready to modify. And then also I'm going to do a oil pressure gauge, oil temp gauge, and then a tachometer. If I can find one that'll work with the magneto and will also be the same size as the others, that way it's all consistent. I'm just gonna work on getting this thing stripped down more. So the top of the engine cover has to come off, cowl, this thing has to come off, and then work on removing all the wiring. That way when the new stuff comes in, it's just a matter of making a new harness, throwing it all in and having it ready to go. But yeah, we're making progress. It also has an oil leak, I noticed, and it's right where the governor comes out of the block. I mean, it's not super surprising, but it's also not a big deal because we're just gonna delete it anyway, which means I'm gonna remove the governor shaft and probably thread the hole and put a bolt in there. So I've gotten pretty much everything in that I needed to do the wiring and the whole dash assembly. The biggest thing was I got this sheet of stainless. So this was like, I guess, a leftover piece of stainless. I, I wanna say it's 20 gauge. It's real thin. The idea is that I'm just gonna lay it over top of this dash because it has all the factory holes for things and this is the only one I need. The rest of them are not necessary. And I wanna be able to put you know, my gauges in and whatnot. And there's no way to do that while making this look good. Like these holes are just, it's awful. So the idea is I'm gonna trace this dash onto the metal, cut it out, lay it over top, bolt it on, and then cut out the appropriate holes so that way everything looks good. Got in the kill switch, little tether kill switch. The push button start, main power on and off. I'm gonna do wiring for lights and I got LEDs for the, the gauges and I'm also gonna do probably LED headlights, maybe lights somewhere else. Got in the stuff to wire the gauges, got the stuff to wire the starter. So to start off, I'm just gonna trace this dash onto the stainless, cut it out, lay it on, drill the bolt holes, get this all laid out ready to go and then start mocking up where I want stuff to be on the dash. I end up using the die grinder and there's a couple spots I missed so that's gonna mess up the surface. Also, I warped it a little bit, so that'll be, I mean, that'll fix itself with heat once it's bolted down. But They're not super even. These bottom ones are okay, the top ones are not. So to start off, I'm just going to drill out the hole here for the steering column. Once I have that, I know where I can put the gauges and stuff. thing I have to do now is map out where I want everything. The fit and finish stuff, like all the edges and hole sizes and stuff are all gonna be refined once I have everything in place. I am pretty happy with that. This is a two and a half by two and a half square. It's nice and even. I don't really care about the spacing around because this thing is a weird shape. It doesn't really matter. It's gonna be push button start here. Main power here, which is literally the ignition cutoff and everything else, it's a cutoff. Tether kill switch here, which is a fail safe. And then this is gonna be lights. So it's gonna be dash lights and then headlights and whatever little lights I decide, which are gonna be wired off of the battery versus the stator. So off the battery with a relay with the fuse, that way they get actual brightness versus the stator, which puts out no power ever. Oil pressure and oil temp, I don't care about voltage. So I'm just not even gonna put that one in. This sucks. Okay, I'm done. This is stupid. I'm just gonna do engine work now because this is uh, ridiculous. The drill bit I'm using is now dull because I'm stupid. But it looks really good like it should because it's literally new. It's a shame about the previous owner because like every single 
pulley under here is new. The belt is new. All the pulleys on the deck were new except for the two spindles. Like they put money into this and I guess that was the whole thing was it kept having issues. They just kept throwing money into it and they were paying the labor each time. So it only just added up, I guess. Last bolt and then this engine is free. Oops. Let me just see if I can liberate it. Okay. Okay, there we go. This is gonna be interesting because I am weak and this engine is not small. Oh shit. Okay, this is gonna suck. Uh oh, why? Oh, it's gas. Okay. That sounds bad. Not gonna reuse those gaskets, just there's no reason to. This one's not even the right gasket. So this one has this kind of gasket, which is a little too small. And this one had this gasket. So at some point, someone's pulled these exhaust manifolds off and they did it cheaply because they used random bits of hardware and the wrong gaskets. So that's neat. There we go, linkage is off. You can go in the trash. Nobody wants you anymore. Just gonna... Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of nick marks from a screwdriver previously, so it definitely tells me someone's been in here before. So we got some residual sludge, but this is the guy we're gonna remove. Looks like there's a little C-clip. Uh, this has to come out too. This is the other part of the governor, which we don't care about. So this notch fits into the camshaft there. So this is a camshaft driven oil pump is what it is. There goes the oil drive. Put that back and pretend nothing happened. The governor is out, it was sitting here. So now it's just a matter of pulling out that little seal. There's a little seal in here, we'll pop that out. Looks like there's a bushing in there too, so I may see if I can tap that out and then just thread a bolt in here with some sealant. Or that's pretty large, I may be able to put like the, or the oil temp sensor there. That's how you remove it. I heard another little piece go flying. Probably gonna have to look for that and make sure it's not floating around in the crankcase. The new gasket, which I got the Briggs gasket. And then also, which is pretty important, came with torque specs and the torque pattern. So it just goes across in a crisscross pattern like standard. And then it says tor final torque spec is 300 inch pounds. So yeah, I definitely recommend getting a gasket set prior to taking anything apart. It's like just cause I can get this gasket off without it like hopefully ripping. Oh, there we go. You don't want to reuse these anyway. Like even if I hadn't ripped it, the shroud. That is a huge combustion chamber. This thing has to be like 7.1 to 1 compression ratio. There's no way. But it doesn't look super bad. It definitely looks like it has hours on it for sure. Definitely have caked up material. I still see hash marks actually on the combustion chamber. But I got everything clean now. But there's still a bunch of dirt and crap in the rings. And I'll show you how to get that out of here. So firstly I got, I blew out all the holes with carb clean. Same with the passages for the push rods. But right now I have this bank, put a little marble, just like an ounce or so, and just swirl around the combustion chamber. As the piston itself goes down, the oil hold the debris on the cylinder wall so you can wipe it off. And keep using clean paper towels or rags or whatever, because this needs to be like surgically clean. Yep, a little too much. And you just want to basically keep doing this until there's no more debris left on the cylinder walls. That's looking pretty good. This is looking pretty good. Got both the mating surfaces flattened just with, I wanna say 400 grit. Got everything really clean. These are actually really smooth as far as ores go. And this is why I like real engines versus cheap knockoffs. I'm not naming any particular, but they don't bother to do stuff like porting and polishing. Like this, I wouldn't consider this polished, but I've seen heads where like, they're just straight cast aluminum and they don't flow worth a shit. And just in case you need to know, head bolts are half inch. The lock nut for the rock arm is half inch. And this center one is a Torx T40. And then both the exhaust and intake need to be gapped to 0.004 to 0.006. So got 0.005 here. And you just wanna be able to like slide it through freely, but with just a tiny bit of resistance. I'm not gonna like pretend to be excited because I already figured this out, but we have this fitting here, but I figured it out that fitting for the pressure line and it's literally the same size and the same thread. <laughs> so I'm really happy about that. The other one, this side where the temp is gonna go, it's the right diameter. Like the temp sensor drops right in, but I don't have the right tap and die to create threads for it. So this is gonna get held up for now. Well, we haven't really made a whole lot of progress. I've just been dealing with one 
roadblock after another, like the dash being awful, using an impact which isn't the right tool to drill, drill bits being probably garbage. It's held up this video so long that I've literally been filming for a little bit more than two weeks. That's unacceptable. And I've been compiling the footage as I go. And currently I already have enough for a full episode. So I'm just gonna end the video here and just pick up with what I planned on doing for this original episode. Cause like to do the wiring, to do the fittings and stuff and get this all sealed and put it back in the frame and get the thing running again. This video would be like 20 plus minutes long and I don't think anyone really has the attention span for that. Also like that's just tedious at that point. So I'm just gonna end the video here cause I'd like to get back to that once every two weeks or maybe even more frequently upload schedule. So yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned.